Good morning, it is day 17 and it is Thursday, August 15 and we are on the road, you can see that beautiful sun rising behind me, it's about 7.45 at the moment and I've got to say, I'm freezing, for the second time I'm freezing, the first time I was freezing was when we were up in the mountains walking through those clouds didn't have a jumper, I was too lazy to put one on. Today, it's just freezing, but I know it's gonna be hot, so a little bit of, little bit of coldness. Enjoy the coolness for now. Last night was beautiful. We stayed at Alberg Santa Cruz. Uh, we went to the Pilgrim Mass, and I was pleasantly surprised when the priest came over and asked me before the service, would I mind doing a reading? So I was like, me? Okay. <laughs> so uh, I was the only pilgrim up there doing a reading. And uh, yeah, it was nice. You did see a little snippet of it in last night's video. Shane took a sneaky video. Glad he did, because I can hardly believe I did it actually. Uh, we went and had one drink after church and then we pretty much hit the sack. We were tired yesterday. We were tired, whether it was the 42 day catching up, the terrain under our feet yesterday was pretty horrible actually. It was a, a lot of big stones. So we were walking over, you know, um, a lot of loose stones. And it's actually, I don't know if anyone's ever been to the hot springs in Mornington and they've got that reflexology walk that you can do with all the pebbles out oh on your bare feet felt like that yesterday for 25 k's so it was a lot today we're doing a 36 k day and no backpack for eight euros i sent my backpack on because it is 36 k's uh, we're staying at mansella i think but i'll touch base with that later and then tomorrow we get to leon which is a big city and we're staying in a hotel so that'll be really nice as well we got our halfway certificate yesterday and that was also pretty cool and then we went and got some food and had a beautiful picnic up on the hill to celebrate our achievements by the end of today we will have actually walked 500 kilometers doing well doing well uh, some questions someone asked me about my toenails yeah my toenails are doing great no problems at all no blisters no feet problems I mean they were tender by the end of yesterday but no real problems as such cats yeah there are lots of cats and lots of dogs and I probably just don't take enough photos of them so today that's gonna be my goal Today there's also two different routes and I'm going to let Shane talk about it because some people are loving hearing from Shane. So let's talk to Shane. Uh, good morning. So there's two routes out of the town which just left. Uh, one then goes along the highway. It's about, um, well, it's about 23 k's I think till it hits up with the rest of the track and the other one's about 26 but it goes through bushland. Uh, the one on the highway is the original, so we've chosen that also, it's 3k less, which today we're going to be doing uh, a big day, like mm. 36k's plus, yeah. so we thought we would take that one. Um, but it's very clearly signed as you come to the crossroad to choose which way you want to go, so it's a, an easy option, it's about uh, 3, 5k out of town, you have to make a choice. Yeah, yeah, and I think on this one, did you just say this, but there's less places to stop along here yeah we've got two spots i think one will be doing probably 8k without anything and i think there's one that's probably going to be close to like 14 15k without any any stops along the way yeah but we're hoping that maybe um and we've seen this a bit we haven't actually seen it much here but we've seen on a lot of youtubes where there's a lot of uh locals who come down and set up stalls for donativa now we did see one when we left Chinquang that time and it had the bread and we picked up the almonds. Yep. Uh, that was a good one. Yeah, the, uh, the beer and the hot dogs and stuff. 
two days ago. Yeah, yeah, the the bar, the, the cafe. Yeah. yeah, the cafe along the 17k it stretch. It started as a stand, and then uh, eventually the thing just got so popular that they actually built structures there. Yeah. So that's us today. Keep your questions coming, and we'll talk soon. Real Camino. So someone asked yesterday about graffiti and I said, oh no, it's not too much graffiti and the graffiti that there is, it's kind of purposeful and not too bad, but actually I'm gonna reassess that. I'm gonna say that the graffiti is unnecessary. Unnecessary graffiti. This is the fastest running river we've seen. Shane suggested getting a lilo and going for a cruise down the river. So we've just found an Elberg on our way. It's massive actually. We're stopping in here seeing if we can get some coffee. Morning coffee. It's been about two hours now so that's it's generally what we like to do and if we see one Gosh, we get one. <laughs> Sun feels good. I think I'm finally defrosting. <sighs> this is the menu. I'm getting ham and cheese. Shane's getting a chorizo and cheese. We've got our coffees here, and this is a 50 euro. This place looks kind of cute. Very nice. I've got smoothies here too, if you want smoothies. Just looks like it's going to be nice outside. I'm starting to defrost, which is great. It's annoying when we leave and we decide, remember we didn't get a stamp. Shane says, nah, let's keep going, come on. It's all right. We've got so many stamps. My credentials is nearly filled. Shane's down one or two behind me. One was from the man who only wanted to give us one stamp the other day. And that was my grumble and the other time I think one of my stamps took over two squares instead of one. Yeah yeah we just ran into Eduardo and he decided to interview me because I interviewed him the other day he was the guy from Brazil. From, uh, Brazil. Up, yeah Brazil nice guy he's doing it a bit differently to us he I mean, he's got his pack on now, it looks like he's ready to leave, but he generally leaves later and he actually gets into Elberg's late. So that night when we are at Valora, he arrived at, I don't know, 9.30. Saw him a few days ago, he arrived in the town at like eight o'clock at night. Uh, yeah, so. Which for a dot, if you think you're doing a night one dot, uh, that's your problem is the Elberg's locked doors at 10 o'clock. Yeah. So unless you know someone inside to let you in, you won't get in. And they generally won't let you in much before sort of 12 or 1 once they've cleaned up after the other people. Yeah, that's true. Uh, someone asked about tattoos. Uh, good question. Uh, yes, Shane does have two. He's got one of his dog that passed away and one of his boat. There it is there. There's his boat that he's got and there's Wheeler. So, and someone asked, will he be getting another tattoo at the end? Yeah, we both actually wouldn't mind getting a Camino tattoo at the end, but not sure what that will look like or where we'll get it on our body or where we'll actually, um, what establishment we'll go to. Ideally, we would love to get it done in Santiago, like that would be amazing. However, because we're traveling afterwards, um, like if I got one on the back of my foot, it means I can't put my foot into the pool for a few days and we're gonna to go to Barcelona and Valencia and it's gonna be hot and gosh, I'm gonna to wanna to sit by a pool after this trip. <laughs> so just not really sure on that just yet. I've seen lots of uh, people that have done it previously have, uh, I've taken a heap of photos of yeah. that people have got. We're getting some ideas of what to get. Yeah. I saw a good one yesterday, a guy who's ridden it and yes. walked it and has the shell with the footsteps and a bike under it. It looked pretty good. Yeah. The other thing, um, I didn't interview the guy, 
probably should have now, but we were chatting to a guy who from, I don't know, was he from Portugal? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah Portugal. Portugal and he's bike riding. Yeah, so they're using electric bikes. Apparently they've just changed the regulations and if you use uh, electric bikes, you can't get your Compostela at the end. But a lot of people don't care about that. But he, it's taken him four days to get to where we were, where we were yesterday after 16. 16 days of walking and he's hoping to be in Santiago by Saturday. And today's Thursday. Yeah, they're doing about 120 k's a day. Yeah, he also said that the electric bike is great for when they're going up hills, but on flat surfaces, it does it time out or something? Oh, the problem is they're heavy. They weigh like 20 kilos, where a normal bike weighs sort of seven or eight kilos. Um, yeah. And you can only have so much charge in them. And yep. they do sometimes self-charge, but never as much as as you're going to require to, to do 120 k's. Yeah, so they've got their 20 kilo bike plus their probably 10 kilos oh, on the bike. They had their packs going forward. Oh, that's they right, they did. They had a support crew with them, uh, one of their sons, yeah. who driving the car with all their gear in it. Yeah. But yeah. it's a good way to do it if you're uh, short on time. And there's some beautiful trails that would uh, be great fun to do a mountain bike. Yeah, I'm yeah. um, just looking for an arrow. There's another Alberg just here. Hello, good morning. Um, where's the arrow? Okay, we'll just keep walking straight and hopefully see an arrow. I'm gonna press stop actually and have a look at our map. There's another hostel there. And over there is our arrow, so we'll follow it this way. Someone else asked me about the lamb's wool. Do we actually like wrap it around our toes or, or something? No, we don't wrap it around our toes. I kind of put my toes sock, put my toes in the sock, and then I use my finger to stuff it down. But I guess you could wrap it around your toe. Yeah, if you didn't have toe socks and that was your issue, your toes are rubbing together. You, you could. We gave some to someone that was using. That yeah, way. yeah. Um, today I've just put a little bit on my left inside heel because after a long distance. It starts to rub, but you know, that actually happens at home as well. If we're out hiking, um, don't know, maybe it's the way I walk. Maybe my left heel rubs on my shoe when I walk a bit funny, when, especially if your feet are tired and you gotta concentrate on picking out your feet a bit better. Yeah, the thing about the lambs as well is it's so fine. It's uh, almost like cotton, like a cotton ball. And uh, it actually goes into the fibers of your sock. I have one that I put in on day one and I've washed the socks probably 15 times and it still hasn't moved from where it was. Yeah. You can actually see it sort of has merged into the sock and coming through the other side. Yeah. So they tend to stay there and just be reusable for where they are. Yeah. But I mean, if I was to do the Camino again, I'd use the same shoe, same sock, and I'd get the lamb's wool. I wouldn't change anything with my feet because it's been perfect. So far, I've been very lucky. Very yeah, lucky. I might possibly change my shoes. I might go from uh, I have ultra long feet. I might go to the Olympus. Olympus has a lot more padding under it, more like a hoka. Ah, uh, yeah. And the same wide toe box on them. Yeah. But it'll stop your feet getting as bruised over all these rocks. Yeah. So potentially, I might change that. Yeah. Good idea. Look at some of these houses. I think Sevende means for sale. I've seen that a few times. We just met a German woman who left our Alberg with us this morning and uh, I was just chatting to her and she said that she thinks that some things might be closed today because in Germany today it's a public holiday. It's about when, what did you say? It's about when... Um, it's what to do with Mary is born. Yeah, something like that. Mm, so... That'll be interesting to see today. The next town is six k's away, I think, Shane, you said? Uh, yeah, seven back there, so probably six now. Yeah. Another Elberg down there. Another restaurant down there. Another bike rider. He's obviously transported his pack because he doesn't have anything on him. And I've defrosted. My fingers feel like they can move again. I mean, look at these houses. Just like boarded up. Oh. Look at the 
the artwork on this fence. So it's actually made out of steel as well. How oh, cool. Cute little fence. Right, and off we go. Haven't seen a horse for a while, actually. Haven't seen horses or cows, to be honest. Just reading through some of my YouTube comments and thought I would answer this way as well as some I've answered on the page. Donativo. Donativo is a donation only. But remember, this donation helps them keep operating. It's, you know, courtesy and goodwill to give a donation. Uh, we've been to two and we've given 10 euros for the dinner and 10 euros for the um, accommodation because accommodation we're spending is about 10 to 15 euros. So that's what we've been giving. I know some pilgrims give less than that, but I think it's important to also be fair and reasonable. Uh, it's a bed and it's a meal and that's great. That's what you want. But again, each to their own. But yeah, remember the Donativo is something that helps them continue their great service and the great work that they do for the pilgrims. So that's helpful to know. The other one someone asked about was, did we do a lot of training? Definitely answered this, but I'll mention it again. For the last two and a half years that we knew we were coming, we every weekend would go on hikes and sometimes hilly, sometimes flat. Distance is probably range between, I don't know, 13 and 25 Ks. If you go back on my YouTube account, you can see from my very early days, I was certainly um, at times doing it tough, but always so rewarding and knew that it was part of the bigger plan, the bigger picture. Glad I did that. The last six months, Shane and I have had so much going on on weekends and etc. So we haven't done as much as we would have liked to in the last six months, but I've got to say, I wouldn't say we've struggled at all because of that. I think that if you can walk, you can walk. I was talking to someone yesterday, Norma, and it doesn't matter what your age is because, you know, we might be doing 30 k's a day, but we know many people, many people are doing 10 or 15 k's a day. You know, the German guys that we walked with, I made a comment the other day and he's like, they, their aim is to get to 10 k's every day. So yeah, listen to your body. Listen to your body. Take a day when you need it. Short day when you can. Check the weather forecast as well. I mean, we did that big one the other day. We knew the weather was going to be perfect walking weather. So, you know, that's the type of stuff you need to do. Uh, the other thing was about my daily spending at the end that I put up. That is what I have spent out of my money. So it's based on one person. If you're going as a couple, you double that. Uh, the last few days I've had a lot less beers and having uh, Coke Zero instead. Coke Zero is actually more expensive than beer. Uh, but it's obviously got less calories and I'm about that sometimes. Uh, the Albergs, you know, last night was 20 for the double, which meant it was $10 for me and $10 for Shane. So, yeah. And the price at the end that I put up is always in euros. Sometimes I'll add the Australian money and sometimes I just forget. But generally, we've doing, been doing pretty well. I mean, a beer is about, you know, what, $2.50? Yeah, dollar fifty to two fifty, three. three yeah. A coke is worth two fifty euro in a can. Yeah, so it's not all that expensive. And to be honest, we've just stopped now, and we had a bocadilla, which was four eighty, and a coffee, which was one eighty. And we'll stop for another coffee somewhere down the road. It might be two euros each. And then, yes, it's huge. So we've we've 
put half an hour bag to eat later as well. So yeah, my spending might not look like very much. Another subscriber, Judy, has asked about um, Wi-Fi and phone connection. So I was with Telstra. I changed over to Vodafone in Australia before I left for $5 a day. Vodafone hasn't been amazing. Although today as we're walking, I'm able to check some of my comments and respond to them, which has been good. But um, you could get away with it and just use the Wi-Fi at, you know, when we stopped just now for coffee, there was Wi-Fi, uh, there's posters, all around cafes and albergs and shops, you can use free Wi-Fi. I got um, the Vodafone because I've got two beautiful children at home, uh, Lockie and Courtney, and I just wanted to uh, be available if they needed me. Um, that was pretty much it. I might turn off the $5 a day when we go to Barcelona, etc. But for the Camino, when I wasn't sure how much uh, Wi-Fi would be available, I wanted to ensure that I was reachable. So that was basically it. On other holidays I've been on to Bali and Thailand, I've never paid the $5 a day because I've always only been gone for 10 to 14 days. And I know in those Asian countries, Wi-Fi is readily available. So. That's the internet. Someone has also asked about Saint San, San Anton, the ruins, and its opening. And said that in the John Briley book, it said that it's only open from May till September. I believe this to be correct. Can't remember the exact date, but yes, Joseph did tell us that it's only open for short periods during the year when it's busy. And also he said, they don't open in winter because it is absolutely freezing cold and there's no electricity to keep you warm. The thing to be aware of is they don't have pilgrims um, like enter or check in till like 2.30. I mean, we got in a bit early because it was so hot and it was so lovely, but generally 2.30 they let you in. Now, if they're closed and it's after 2.30, walking to the next town, is only five k's away. Uh, it's only five k's away, so not too bad. Not too bad. And we could have actually walked the five k's, but we actually wanted to stay there, so that's why we stopped. I was just saying to Shane that I think this path talks about it being along the roadside, etc., etc. But since I've been walking. We've seen three cars and a tractor. So Susie, <laughs> I can't play that car cricket game because <laughs> the first car was red. That was the very first car I saw, it was red. Then there was a white wagon going to Santiago sign on the side. And then there was a little silver car and then a tractor. So um, <laughs> this a cricket game of cars could actually last for 10 hours without someone being out because there's just no cars. We've been walking, it's now 9.16, been walking for three hours. Yeah, we had a 20 minute stop, but uh, yeah, no cars are coming down here. So for anyone else who thinks oh, I don't want to walk along the roadside, it's perfectly fine. And the terrain on our feet is actually quite nice. There's a few little rocks, but it's a bit sandy, then there's a little bit of grass, and so that's been fine. Um, and there's also all these trees along here, so thank gosh there's no shade right now because my body was freezing this morning. But I would suggest that later in the day there'd be a lot of shade along this path. So yeah. I love when I get your questions, and I think it was Bonnie who asked a question and I answered it earlier today. That was about uh, my toenails and about cats. But she also asked about my archies, which are my thongs that I wear at night when I, you know, get back to the alberg and have a shower, etc. They have been great. Uh, I didn't really wear them back in Australia. I bought them, well, my son gave it to me for Mother's Day uh, for this trip. And sometimes when I put them on, 
after taking off my shoes, my feet feel like, oh, killer. But after walking around in them for a little while, yeah, they feel great. What I'd say about that is make sure the shoes you pack to wear in the evenings are comfortable. Because you let your feet out of your shoes and your socks and you want your feet to air and dry out from the day, but they need to be comfortable. I also wear my uh, thongs in the shower and yeah, and they're light. I don't even know. I can't, I think I weighed them before I left and they were like maybe 120 grams or something. They were just nothing. Shane's got earth runners, earth runners which are like a, yeah, grab one, you can grab one out, yeah. It's a barefoot zero drop runner. That's them there. They're made up by Jack Dorsey, the creator of Twitter. Creative Twitter. Uh, yeah, I actually play them do a few stages. And they're, uh, yeah, they're really good. They have a back on them, so they have a handle, but a really solid grip. And they have a copper, so you can earth your stuff if you're into that. Yeah, good one. So yeah, comfortable footwear at the end of the day is essential. Essential. Uh, so thanks, Bonnie, for that question. I don't know if you can see, but there's all these birds out there at the moment. They're flying around everywhere, looking for bugs probably. I also wanted to add that um, I have 699 subscribers, which is fabulous. I don't get paid for this and I'm not intending on getting paid for any of these. I'm doing this because I'm wanting to inspire others and to share information that I felt had been missed in the past. We had watched so many YouTube videos and I quite often had so many questions. And one very good example is someone we're watching would often do a video of the day and then show us where they stayed, but never told us where they stayed. And I'm like, where'd you stay? And they'd be like, oh, we had a great accommodation last night. How much was it? What did they provide? So that was really my motivation for starting this channel. And I hope that I have been able to answer your questions. And if you've got questions, please send them through. I love to answer them. And there's some really great questions. And I know that when I answer them for one person, I get five comments from others saying, oh, it's exactly what I needed to know. So thank you for your questions. Keep them coming and I hope I continue to inspire you all and uh, maybe one day see you guys out here on the Camino. We've already started thinking about what's our next adventure and there is a Camino, so there's a few different Caminos, but this is the major one, the Francis, and it's the longest one, I think, the longest, yeah. And, but there is one that starts in Porto, is that right, Porto, Portugal? And it's only about 200 kilometers, and you could probably do it in 10 days. So, and that's, yeah, along the coastline, it's pretty flat. Uh, and people we've spoken to along the Camino who have done it said that it was magical. So that could certainly be the next one. Uh, I'll get a group together and we can all go do this, go do this together. And 10 days is like, you know, the two week school holidays. So it's not like you really need time off work. Along this path, there's also quite a lot of concrete chairs. So yeah, this is the original path, even though it's a long trek between towns. I've seen a few of those. This is what it looks like at the moment out here. We've just walked onto the freeway, but again, now only seen five cars. And only one red one this morning. The first car I saw was red. So we're just getting here now. Fresh fruits and vegetables. Looks good. Looks great. Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 See you again. So a very cute little shop, it's got everything in here you need, it's got wine and juice and food and bread and fruit and they make coffee and this is the place of the sun, Marissa! Marissa. <laughs>
and she speaks very good English. So we've stopped out here to have a cup of coffee. And what's a really, there's, you can see up there the, uh, the sun. And on the actual stamp, it's got a sun on it. And it's also got 361. She was lovely. And they're playing Kylie Minogue on the inside. Swing your hips now. Come on, baby. Anyway, this is what I've got. A coffee, a little biscuit, and a nectarine. And Shane's got coffee and this Aquarius water that everyone drinks. And it's got uh, lots of minerals in it. And it's electrolytes and it's great for hydration. So uh, Shane's been drinking them a bit. Uh, you'll see he's also got a knee brace on his knee. Shane, tell us about the knee brace. Uh, it's put on... Uh, as a preventative measure, I have dislocated my knee a bunch of times in my early 20s. Um, I don't really have many knee issues day to day, but uh, walking over a few of the hills uh, early stages, I noticed I was getting like uh, twins there and a little bit of swelling. Um, uh, so a few days back, I went to a pharmacy, picked them up. I think it was 14 euros, mm. something like that. Uh, yeah, today's the first day. I've just thought tried out. I still haven't got any knee troubles on the flats, but we're about to go into the hills in a couple of days. So, yeah. yeah. So, so it's a preventative. So today he's doing well, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's just put it on today to get used to it, I guess. Oh yeah, that guy over there's got two on his knees. You see a lot of people with them on their knees or on their ankles. The longer you go along uh, the Camino, the more you see. <laughs> So we did just stop here for coffee and got a piece of fruit and as I'm leaving I was just reading the comments and someone has commented that that cafe actually has gluten-free bread and gluten-free pasta and how helpful they were and I've got to say the lady in there was beautiful, really nice, we've got a biscuit with our coffee, beautiful fresh nectarine and she was so cheerful and smiley and beautiful and that's what the Camino spirit is about and she certainly displayed that so if you're going through El Burgos Renaro, I can't remember the town now but if you go through this town uh, definitely stop there and if you have some dietary requirements she would be able to fill them lovely love that love when we meet beautiful people and when I mean, she gave me the stamp on my credential, which I just started a new one. Yay! <laughs> uh, she explained the stamp to me and no one's actually done that before. Too eager, too eager. All right, go. There you go, nearly 500 in Ks and she's still got it. So the guidebook actually says that town that we just left, that this canal has a lot of frogs in it. Can't see any frogs. Can see the water's moving. And also the town actually uh, used to be very well known for sheep and wheat as well back in the day. We must be near an airport because it's like the third the third plane that we've seen come across. So we think there's an airport out there somewhere. Shane said on his map he could see that. Yeah, it has the Gollywood, it has the fat policeman. What's this one? I'm my naughty book I got. Oh your naughty book, yeah right. We're talking about naughty, we're talking about Sesame Street, we've just been talking about play school, you know, the things you do when you've walked five hundred kilometres. <laughs> The things you talk about. <laughs> what we did see before, and I'm, I'll put the photo in, is a blind man walking. He had a high vis vest on, he had a wooden stick, and he was, uh, come on, Camino. Um, and he was definitely feeling his way around the ground as he was walking. Like, he's probably walked from one town to the other, and this is probably a 12k stretch. Uh, good on him. See, you can do anything if you set your mind to it. So the guidebook actually says that the trees have been planted on the wrong side of the road. However, they are providing a lot of shade and it is 11.30 in the morning. So 
there is some good shade. Uh, it's August, 11.30 in the morning. So if you're doing this walk in August at this time of day, it's actually not too bad. The weeds can be a bit annoying on your legs, but I've done some road walking this morning. I only just cut back over here onto the track. And yeah, it's definitely softer on your feet. But uh, yeah, there's definitely shade. Definitely shade in little bursts. I'm gonna stop here in the shade, have a little snack, find a chair that's in the shade. This is what we're walking through at the moment. You can see all the beautiful autumn leaves, the trees, sunflowers to our left. To our right, it's pretty bare and you can see a train line over there. But it's been a beautiful walk this morning. Uh, we left at just after six. Well, it's now 12.45 and we've had three little stops of about 20 minutes each. So yeah, we've had an hour of stops. Not exactly sure how much further we've got to go, but on the days where it's a nice walk, you just walk and you don't think about when you're getting there, how far away it is. It's warm, but not overpowering warm. There is a beautiful breeze and there's been a ton of shade intermittently as you can see now the trees that we're heading into have lost their leaves but back from where we've been walking the trees had lots of leaves therefore provided lots of shade so yeah beautiful day beautiful day so in true Camino style in true, in true Spanish style walk over a little hill and here is a town in front of us which means after this town i think we've only got like six k's to go which will be nice feeling good shane and i were just talking about the meseta so as i've said since burgos we're in the meseta which is the middle part of the camino and it's all about the mind because they say you've already conditioned your body and your body's good to go but because of the long open stretches that um, this is this part is about your mind. I was a little bit nervous about the Maceta because Shane had kept talking about it being long and open and hot and nothing out here and you know people quite often find it a bit boring and this is the part that a lot of people actually will skip and get a bus all the way to Leon. However I found it one of the most enjoyable parts of the Camino and I, I'm not sure if that's because it's been mainly flat but for me, because it has been flat, I feel like I've enjoyed it that little bit more. You can actually look around and see things. Whereas when you've got all the, the hills, I kind of feel like, oh God, just get me to the end. I just want to get to the end and tick that day off. But um, we've had some really nice days walking through the Meseta. Also pretty lucky with the weather at the moment. We started off when it was like 35 degrees for a few days. And the last few days have been <laughs> probably about 25 to 30 which is great which is great now we've actually got here La Car La Lucan La Cantina de Teddy so we're gonna stop here and have a drink and um, we'll keep going from here first time I've seen crepes as well little Madeira cakes even eggs yeah cute Yes. So we're in Religio. Religios. We had a drink. Apparently, it's only six more kilometers for us to go today, which is awesome. Love to hear that. It's great news. Great news. Interesting. We've had some conversations about 
my grumble yesterday and had someone provide some feedback which is great i love feedback but uh yeah as for the stamp getting we only got one stamp puller i didn't bother buying something else to get another stamp that really peeves me off Helen's so competitive she likes to be stamps ahead of me <laughs> two stamps ahead yeah but uh as for the toilet yeah what they probably should do instead of cracking it is making a donation making a donation um you know box to use the toilet that i get yeah you're right ever who it was that was made that comment earlier you're right it's water it's power it's soap it's hand towel yeah and i would have been happy to make a donation if it said donation only you know we go to places in europe or even in bali there are places that you know you need to pay to go to the toilet so that's not un uncommon for me it's that's normal i think it was the attitude that was taken with it uh or that was given at the time but anyway i'm over that one it's fine no problems just crossing this bridge and oh, the sunflowers oh i think i can see cows out there in the distance too First time in a while. I was just saying that earlier this morning. I haven't seen cows and horses for ages. And there's some cows over there. And I actually think in the distance. Yeah, I reckon those rooftops over there are the town. I think that's our town over there. Sorry. Shane just commented that this looks like a bit in Bacchus Marsh Avenue of Honour. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this looks like. Nice and shady, nice and soft under your feet. Yeah, probably only five k's to go. Okay, we're listening to our first song, Phil Collins. First song in 500 k's. First song in 500 k's. I headphones once. We were dancing because we were trying to work out what song it was. <laughs> I started playing them like, oh, we might as well let it <laughs> So this can be our Camino song. <laughs> Look what I can see over there. What do you think it looks like? I'm not in Alice Springs, but it certainly looks that way. So we've just arrived at Mansilla. That's where we're staying and that's actually it, El Jardin del Camino. Apparently it's just up here, not very far, which is great. It is 2.46. We had timed it that we'd probably be here about three, so good timing. And we've had four breaks, each for about 20 minutes, I reckon. And we left at quarter past six. So not bad timing at all. So it's called Mansella de, la, de las Mulas. That's the town we're in. And we've walked over 30 kilometers but yeah, it hasn't felt too bad to be honest. So yeah, I enjoyed today's walk. Yeah. So this is our place here. Doesn't open? Maybe around the corner. Following the arrows. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen beds in here. That's my bed with the pink on it over there. And then out here is the laundry. And then 
out here is the garden area and where you can hang all your clothes and that's our view. This is also the view from the window. You can see the church in the background over there. So in here is a little kitchen area if you want to take your own food, microwave your own food, sit in here, common area, nice. So it turns out it's a bank holiday in this town. So very little is open. Religious holiday. Oh, he just said a bank holiday. He's wrong. It's a real religious holiday. So I wanted to go to the supermarket. Not going to happen. That's okay. We're going to go back and we're thinking about going to bed already at 5.45 in the afternoon. We won't though. We'll stop a bit later than that. So people do wash their cars in Spain. Look at him, good on him.